I'm going to show you a study here that we did with Haibo Shu in Wuhan. And this is a study of 29 patients. And again, thanks to the students for processing. And 18 of these 29 patients show the same pattern. And that pattern is we see sometimes no left transverse sinus. We see significantly reduced flow in the jugulars on the left side. And the interesting picture is the bottom left here. Uh, the bottom left, you see the jugular, the, there's no transverse sinus at all. You actually have the stump of the jugular at the top, and you have multiple vessels from the brain coming down and feeding into that stump. So this is very interesting. And the, I can show you 16 more pictures, and they all look the same as this. This is a very strong marker for CCSVI. I just show you two more here and highlight Notice there's only one major vessel carrying the flow out of the brain here. It's the right internal jugular. Almost no flow from the other vessels. So CCSVI actually is quite prominent in Parkinson's disease. And this leads credence and credibility to everything we've talked about in multiple sclerosis, that the presence of these abnormal flows has a strong association with the disease. So I think we're still very close to the beginning in trying to understand the whole characterization process and then taking this the, the next step. Are these really treatable? Which parts of the multiple sclerosis abnormal spectrum can be treated where we would expect good results and which ones may not be treatable? And I think that's where we are today and we're looking forward to many interesting presentations at the meeting today. Thank you very much.